How often does Shady take Sneko Eye? Not very often on Silence, but I like it on Ironclad usually. But I'm not, too, you know, once again, fairly limited experience, especially compared to Jerps. I don't Do you know where I'm at. I don't know where I'm at with Sneko on Silent anymore. Okay. You have to rediscover yourself. I've gone so many different directions with my ideas about Sneko Eye. Go Fumes Wraith Form. We can go Calculated Gamble. So, Sneko Eye, the drawing two cards every turn, that's really strong with some things sometimes. Um, like the Corruption, Juggernaut, Feel No Pain deck that you're talking about with Ironclad, for example, yeah. drawing an extra two cards a turn is ridiculous in that deck. The randomization of card costs almost doesn't matter. It's like just not that big a deal. If you have Meteor Strike on Defect or something like that, it does, but the, the two cards drawn per turn is sort of a bigger deal. Usually the decks that I end up building with Sneko I feel worse though. Because um, you're maybe taking a little less synergy and just grabbing higher cost cards. Yeah, like Dash is a good card with Sneko Eye, but it Speaking it has a it has a certain upside or it has a certain uh, ceiling, right? There's some yeah. point at which this just stops doing something. Whereas Crippling Cloud yeah, plus Catalyst plus Burst, well, it has a ceiling, but the ceiling is about seven hundred thousand poison per turn or something, which is a you yeah. know, <laughs> which is all right. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. I think Sneko Eye is really strong at Ascension 15 and below, though. I think if you're not taking it there, you should try it out. Because the deck that you end up with is just... Just powerful, I guess. Yeah, it's strong enough, and it's actually more consistent because you're drawing seven card hands instead of five card hands. Mm -hmm. Although, the way that you're trying to play Ascension 15 right now, all of your cards block. So... When you draw a five card hand, you have four block cards and a scaling card or something, which is pretty consistent. If you're playing Ascension 15, where you're trying to like fit the Skewer Plus in and stuff like that, the closer your deck is to like being mixed of equal components, the easier it is to get very poor random chance and draw the wrong stuff. I'm gonna buy Adrenaline and Fumes. What do you think about that? Seems reasonable. I right? love, yeah, I was I was about to ask, like I love adrenaline, but I wasn't really sure, you know, if you if you wanted to spend this much uh, gold on it because you wanted to keep something open for maybe hitting a huge relic. Yeah. But... The only thing is there isn't a huge relic. When you okay. can be when you can be invincible for six turns and yeah. Yeah. and have two fumes in play. Sweet. Yeah, I guess it's all relative, right? Because because we're pretty happy with the deck and it's pretty consistent. We're not still, yeah, I always take this. Well, not always, but usually take this one. When I'm close to the boss, I'll take the you can't heal, and just upgrade everything. You can't heal is a really fun thing to be able to take and a very difficult thing to be able to take on Ascension 20 because you get that event with, you know, an entire two act bosses, act four elite and final boss fight still ahead yeah. of you That's i think i've taken it. it like twice also taking 999 gold there is very strong sometimes i think if there's a shop ahead or so and you don't have to carry both curses for too long yep Think about Dead Branch. Twitch chat's going through all the stuff that new players sometimes misevaluate to try to make you sound bad. 
<laughs> Let's just assume they're trying to help. Yeah. You think so? Maybe they're trying to help. Maybe they're trying to help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. That's my Twitch chat. Always trying to help. I, I, re I remember my my chat was like, "Oh shit, have you had a branch branch run? Have you had a dead branch dead branch run yet?" They were just asking, asking, and I'm like, "All right, I'll take it, chat." And it destroyed me my first run. Where really? I'm like, Man, this deck. It yeah, it, it killed me because oh. I had no. I had a because I I built those nice synergistic synergistic uh, decks and it just filled my deck with a bunch of random crap <laughs> right i couldn't get my block cards and i died and i'm like all right are you happy now chat uh but i can i can see it being strong when your deck doesn't have to be uh as i, I guess when when i had a deck that relied on I, I don't know what the deck size was but it was relatively small at that point so it seemed like it just detracted rather than added value there are definitely decks where that happens. But you haven't had it with, like, Corruption yet. Or... No, I... Well, I'm not even sure. Maybe I have Corruption in that particular deck. Oh, but but by the way, I also assume that I'm misplaying at the time, right? So <laughs> while misplaying, it's probably easier to die when... Uh, when your deck's being filled with random stuff. Mm. That makes sense. Um... Yeah, I have a recent YouTube video of a run where I had a dead branch, two and eight. Let's see, I think I had an anchor probably, and I had two and eight infinite blades and four backstabs, and that was like my starting hand. And I got to find out what cards dead branch gave me on turn one, and then for turn two and onward, I got two shivs that were just random cards every turn. Hmm. But there's there's a bit of a clock there. I mean, obviously, you know, if you have like what four backstabs, was it? <laughs> probably things are quite dead by that time. But um, there's a bit of a clock where you you are adding, you know, some good cards. But in general, I would say below average, right? Mm, to your but deck. in this game, all of your scaling comes from well, sometimes relics, but a lot of your scaling comes from cards. Mm -hmm. So. If you look at the silent card pool, something like 15 of those cards scale you. Like something like 1 in 6 or so, 1 in 7 maybe. And so if you're getting just a ton of cards... Uh, you just hit 1 or 2 of them. Yeah, yeah especially yeah. if you have like 30 to 40 cards in your starting deck, so you get to play with the draw pile you're excited about the first time through, you end up just having your deck sort of take off. It's uh, it's another case where if you're already close to 100% to win the run, it's not as valuable to do as if you're like 60% to win the run. Because it's probably going to make you less likely to win the run if you're almost certain to win already. But a lot, we're, uh, a lot more likely to win the run if you're at 60% or so. Mm -hmm. I don't know how valuable our health is. Probably not very. I think I remember skipping a regal pillow in this run because I just figured we were never taking damage again. So we could probably look at yeah. three of these. I also don't know okay. which ones of them we want, like Master of Strategy. Yeah, usually uh, on Silent I tend to not take the damage here, but I'm uh, I'm not I'm not playing a Wraith from deck, so. Not those ones probably. Secret tech. I think sec secret technique is the only relevant. Oh, we have the the flash of steel. Is that something we might within venom? Um, within venom and after image. Well, I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's okay. It's a zero mana cycle, so it's the heart hits you for two whenever you play cards, and mm. time meter sure. is a thing, but. It's not, we we, it's not I mean, bad at we all. didn't have to take it, right? I'm just, I'm, I'm saying I think it's about, it. it's about, like, it's about even to add it to the deck, or maybe a slight improvement. Like, not not great, but kind of carries its way, it's sort of. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I don't know what I'm meant to get here. Probably Adrenaline.
boot what do you, value. Yeah, what do you think about the boot? Are you aware yeah. that the boot is the best relic in the game? The best relic in the game? The best normal relic or the best like relic? The standard? best of any of the relics, including the boss relics. Damn. No, that, that was definitely not my opinion. <laughs> I don't even... I'm not entirely sure where that one started. Is that the running joke in your chat? Thing? Oh, we have a few jokes here. I think the boot no actually... The boot is definitely a joke. Uh, yeah. <laughs> The best after shovel. Uh, yeah. yeah, shovel I've been told by my oh, chat. Oh, shovel can get you boot. Very good. Oh, so what you're saying is the shovel could be anything, even a boot. So that's why you should take the shovel. Right, and uh, and this way sense. you will never get to upgrade at the campfire again. And, and that's great too. Put chat it's on. Much, much more exciting. Oh, we already did the artifact talk or the archetype talk. What other talks yeah. are there? There's the talk about jobs. So we're sort of we've sort of done that already. I used to teach poker. So this is fun mm -hmm. for me, like talking to someone who's oh look at that stone calendar. Talking to somebody who's good at games about a game like this. Yeah, it's I, I, I do uh, Hearthstone uh, arena coaching as well, so it's indeed uh, you get students of all different skill levels. So it's, uh, it's always fun if you can talk a little bit more, uh, I don't know, like deeper game theory or so. You yeah. don't have to go over the basics too much. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so there's there's the one problem with taking Calculator Gamble number two here, is that at the end of turn one, the heart puts five statuses in whatever is remaining of our draw pile. So if we play a turn one where we draw 25 cards and there are seven cards left in our draw pile, those seven Tons cards are going to turn two. Yeah, get very, very bad. I think we still take it, though. Yeah, my, my instinct... Is, um, but it's the same way how I looked at the Flash of Steel. It's like, well, where's the downside? And you're, you know, you're you're showing the downside. So. There's always something wrong with anything that you want to do in this game. It has a way of ruining any, ruining any firm beliefs that you ever hold. Oh, except Wraith Form's broken. I think that that just stays forever. Recall. So this relic's actually super good because it strips an artifact charge from the Act 4 elites. Mm, yeah, okay. And that way we get to actually do we do we have a will now? Yeah, we, yeah, do. we do. Okay. Probably we end up just killing fast enough that we can just wraith form against them. I think. But it's nice to I mean, if this is dripping an artifact charge, then it's letting us apply an extra three to six poison with Noxious Humes or something on the first turn. And mm -hmm. That's quite a lot of damage. That's a good way to look at it. Shady, you should take notes on what you would have done and check the notes afterwards. You mean like every turn? I don't see where just the decisions like in the shops and stuff were you here ron say i nailed my first chop dude boom <laughs> exactly the same as george yeah oh. and then you were off by like 10 percent win rate in the second <laughs> in the <laughs> second shop but we don't have to talk too much about that well, yeah that's don't fine. bring that up in front of my viewers man come on <laughs> <laughs> But it's cool to find out the reasoning why it uh, why it makes so much sense to get the bag of prep. Yeah, in the same way that energy goes down a little bit in 
Ascension 20 because you just don't do that much unless your cards match up really well. Uh, card draw goes up in value. Yeah, because you're trying to really hit that synergy. Cool. Yeah, I think my play timer. I, I can actually just check how to check my play timer. Mm. Let me do that again. Yeah. I have 94 hours. It's my playtime right now, so. Not super new, but definitely not veteran. I'm at 2432. Oh, reasonable, reasonable. Cat. Cat. You can't do, you can't do that right now, cat. <laughs> I don't I don't know why, but I have two cats and my my younger smaller one at some point decided that my stream setup was really interesting. And so she now does things like jump on top of the tripod for my camera. And I think she was trying to use my LED light as a scratching pad there. Oh yeah. Like, I've got a got a kitty as well. Oh. She's usually just, usually I just need to watch out if there's any food on my desk. She'll be like, yep, it's over there. I'm coming to get it. <sighs> I can see that in Venom doesn't work, by the way. Like that, uh, like when we, because I think we transformed into it, right? Yeah. I looked at this a little bit awkward, but upgraded it's indeed quite nice. Anything that scales damage is going to look pretty good if you can be invincible while it's in play. It doesn't scale damage very well. This deck would be so much more explosive with a catalyst. But yep. if we can get 50 damage on an enemy. Hey, oh, there you go. Baby. Okay. Right. Now We're it's very up. good. Yeah, now it's very good. Better. Are you enjoying how interactive this deck is? I'm sure our opponents are having a wonderful time yeah, sitting for one all the time. I... I think I've sort of given up at this point, but there was a while where I would pretty loudly complain a decent amount about how how little there was to really do once you had a Wraith form in play. Like, the part of the game where you get to work out how to block every turn and stuff like that is really interesting. And I don't think we've talked about it for the last act or so. Yeah, it's just... I, I think it's also because the deck has just gotten faster at dealing damage. So we, hadn't, we haven't really been struggling with that. It's just been Wraith form and go. So that's been, uh, that's been funny. This is a point where something like a deadly poison, like we just need a little bit more damage scaling against the heart and it starts to be pretty good, I think. Oh, okay. There was a run where around about here, I just took a deadly poison with a nightmare in my deck and then I nightmare deadly poison plus against the heart and that was how I killed it in a run where I wouldn't have won otherwise. It's a, like it's a crappy common that you'd be okay with putting your deck in Act 1, right? But it also... Poison does a lot. Yeah, starts to add up pretty fast. All right, let's do it. Do I still not have a video on Wraith form? I'm surprised. I think people have asked me that before. <sighs> Usually I fight this because I think it's interesting for my viewers. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, you shouldn't feel more attached to this run than, than any run, man. I think it's fine if you want to take it. I. What do you think our deck's chances to win this fight? Like 98%? Higher, probably. I usually it's don't like bother with this one. No, it's I, 100%. I think it's... <laughs> Normally, when I when I look at the map, I see the scary elite after this, and I chicken out. But uh, yeah, the wraith forms just give it a whole new dimension. 
We also have Mercury Hourglass and Fumes now. Which mean... And Crippling Cloud. Which mean I... <sighs> it might be possible for us to... Not go so here, but it seems really hard. So what you were doing there is you were looking at, okay, are six turns enough? Are we going to get there? Yeah, exactly. Right? Like when you're looking at that, yeah, okay, cool. Cool, here we go. Yeah, and I guess being able to get the um, fumes done now really helps. And of course, Scripting Cloud next turn is going to just absolutely uh, seal it. Oh, another Jabath in chat. What are your thoughts on Prepare Shady? Pretty good for digging, right? So in most of my decks, if I can get a prepared plus, I really don't mind it. But I'm not, I'm not killing hearts yet. I mean, I've I've killed the hearts, right? But I've I've done it a couple times, and now I'm like, all right, let's just, let's just climb floors. So for Jorps has seen the decks I built. For those decks, it's pretty good. But I'm not really sure uh, if it adds enough for heart runs. Yeah, I think that not taking the site would have been a huge mistake. Well, huge mistake? I don't know. The the other point is like how valuable is the rare relic? Actually, sure. Yeah. Like it's it's pretty free to fight, but at the same time, how much more do you need, right? If your deck's already crisp. So. Well, that that one will probably proc once this run. So, <laughs> so that's excellent. We got an unchaku. Yeah, I like a prepared plus here. Prepared plus is so much of our deck is about finding the cards and putting them in play. So it's it's somewhat like the Flash of Steel, but better because it's not because it cycles more than just itself. Yeah. So with the lot, but, but I guess the lot, but I guess the logic with the Flash of Steel is that it does proc the Envenom as well. And yeah, okay. Although Bouncing Flash Plus is 16 damage every turn for the rest of the fight, so maybe. We did bring it up, er or I did bring it up earlier, that it's quite a nice burst combo, and we did hit uh, another Valate Plants, so the chance that we hit it is higher. Yeah, this is where I, I don't fight the hard enough to contribute enough. I'll take a Flask. I think we care probably a little bit less about when we put our uh, Wraith Worms in play than we do about making sure that we kill the heart in about eight turns. Bouncing so classical health help. We're bombarding poor shady with. I I just don't want to like hijack Jerbs' stream right. I'm used to just chatting to chat. So. No, you're you're good. This is this is wonderful. I get to talk to somebody who has intelligent things to say about the game, <laughs> and and yet and someone someone thing. else is still talking to my Twitch chat. I'm still interacting. This is great. We'll do this more often. Yeah, I remember doing this with a friend back in the day, and like he was streaming, and he brought me and someone else on, and we were talking about the plan. We were talking about the plays, and he said. I have solved streaming. I'm just sitting here and, you know, these guys are talking about the game. The other guy has the mouse, so I'm just sitting here chilling. It's taking it to the next level. Yeah. And I think we have to first bouncing class because we can't calculate a gamble. But then it's just all gonna go on the wrong thing. It's gonna be really upsetting. Yeah, I was about to say that's really like. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Come yeah. On, yeah. You know, yeah. every time I, every time I do this, it's in the fight with the knight and the sorcerer, and it always hits the sorcerer three times, dude. It's so annoying. <laughs> yeah. This is what happens when you YOLO chat. Do you have any plans to try out Defect? Oh, chat yeah, wants for to sure. Know. sure. I'm, I, I, I wanted to play Ironclad until I got either stuck or Ascension 20. And I got stuck on 19. And then, well, stuck, not hard stuck, stuck, but 
I knew that I was doing some stuff wrong for sure. And now with Silent, it's still going rather well. And I'm assuming that after watching this, I'll make sure I take more front loaded damage on Ascension 1 and uh, not Ascension 1, Act 1. And then try to, you know, adjust the deck a bit more based on what boss I'm fighting. But once I'm uh, once I'm through with those, yeah, for sure I'll be playing Defect. Hmm. If we have to fight a weakened one second, our deck is gonna be sort of weird. We might actually die to a weakened one. We didn't get a malaise. Malaise is very good against a weakened one and time eater because they attack you for so many turns and have so many multi-attacks. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the deck's pretty good, so that's usually my way of thinking. If the deck's good, just take the rest. And... But then again, you know, if the assumption is that we're not going to be able to beat the heart normally, then sometimes you have to take risks, I guess. I think my default is actually, if the deck is good, I upgrade. What's the greed uh, or something? I don't know. I don't know why I do that. Yeah, I was about to say. Then what? What's your uh, what's your expectations for the deck that are the decks that aren't good? You're just playing until you die, right? and you're resting because it's it's obvious that if you wouldn't rest, you'd die. Hmm. I think I always like pushing as hard as I possibly can to see what I can do in a game like this, and that's why I do it. It comes from. It's more interesting to me to upgrade and see what happens if I go into this fight with the strongest deck I can build, but not that much health. And have to yeah. make some sketchy decisions, maybe, and stuff like that to see if I can survive. Trying to see where the limit is. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, I guess I was thinking more about playing it more conservative and... But it doesn't really make so, too much sense. If I guess I think... it's more that climbing mentality, right? Yeah. Yeah, if you're trying to climb as quickly as possible, then 100% rest there, I think. But if I think that it's about the same value to rest or not rest, I would rather not rest just to get more information on like how valuable is that upgrade really... How difficult is this fight really stuff like that it's it's remarkable how uh, similar it is to how i approach hearthstone because it's the same thing there where i've played it so much that um if, if someone was learning the game i would say oh you should always pick this card because this card is guaranteed good it's good value take it but the other one might be actually a little bit better or terrible and that's what i'm trying to figure out by picking the card you know but I can afford that because I've done it over and over and over again. So for me, the information is indeed more important than uh, the sure value. Yeah, and I try to maximize how quickly I win the game or the, how quickly I learn the game, sorry, as a streamer, because I'm trying to teach other people how to play. And so if I have a chance in a run to learn something new, obviously I'm not ever just trying to hunt the run entirely deliberately or anything, but. I try to yeah, lean into opportunities to do something different, yeah. All the stone oh, calendar yeah, again. Hey, all right. Let's see what we roll. No. So this is where we died last time, guys. I need your energy here. Let's go. Although this deck is, I would say, considerably better than the last one. With the uh, Wraith Forms. The problem is we're so slow to apply poison that we can't... Yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting. <laughs> Would have been nice to get the adrenaline. We haven't played adrenaline yet, right? 
We have not. No. Mm. You? We know we're getting multi attack next turn. We probably want one fumes in play. We have this potion, which we're probably going to use in this fight, actually. And we get we get a heal after this fight as well, right? Yeah, we Before got we... three quarters yeah. of missing health. Okay. I think it's probably fine, then, yeah. <laughs> At least it's not time either. Hey, Ronson. That would be by far the most common remark in my chat. At least it's not time either. Connect three. How many people will ask you if you have tried the mods yet? Uh, not that many, but that's because I'm still new. But definitely people have told me like, oh, shady, there's mods, man. But I, I've, I've told them that, you know, I, I haven't even climbed its defect yet. So it would seem rather silly to start modding. I also just like playing the game the way how it was meant to be played. It's just Me too. To... <laughs> Me too. How late is it there? Uh, let me have a look. It's 9.30. Right? Oh, okay. So you're still right. probably awake. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, although I did tell my girlfriend I'd probably be there at 9, so <laughs> looking at the time. Uh, we, we can definitely finish this run. No Wait. Mm. She's, she's used to that. I get caught up in streaming usually. Although with Hearthstone, I have a very good uh, kind of, because I've done it for years now, I have this internal clock of how many runs I play, and I'm like, yeah, it's about that time now. So. In Slay the Spire, I can get completely lost and be like, oh, it's two hours longer than I would usually stream. I have a girlfriend and we live together, and I don't think I've gotten to talk to her for three days. Because <laughs> <laughs> she works full time. And I've been waking mm -hmm. up like 4 a.m. and starting streaming before she goes to work. Yeah. It's, it's, this, is, I, this is problems here. Yeah, this feels like we have to Wraith, or is that too early? We would go Snagar, I think, if we needed to do something mm. like that. Okay. Oh yeah, that makes sense, yeah, because we were saving up for this fight. I'm wondering if we just block potion, even. Yep. And we take some damage, but we're not dead. And we... Get to burst a bouncing flask or something soon. The dolphin move in with me. No, during the fights, I'm just trying to keep up with Gareth. Maybe even learn a little bit. We've not quite died yet. Next turn is the multi-attack, though. We have to either use our potion or commit the Wraith form, probably. And I guess then the question we must ask ourselves is, can we kill him in the six turns? Otherwise, we have to push him. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um. Three. Da, 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 da. This has been eight turns, nine turns. I think it'll be really close. If it is really close, I guess we could just raid for him. And then if we don't get there, we then pop Ghost in a turn. Unless, unless I'm off by two turns instead of one turn, in <laughs> yeah, which case okay, okay, well, we lose the entire run. Yeah. yeah. 
depends how much you trust me on that. Oh, I, I trust you completely, Jorbs. I think we, I think we just have to do this, unfortunately. All right. I believe this is referred to as the no balls play. Just if I'm uh, interpreting what chat says properly on my run. I have learned a lot about what it is to be a real man from Twitch chat. I have learned that real men are very bad at Slay the Spire. They, yeah. <laughs> they seem to make some very poor decisions. It's better to hold leg sweep there and try to block this turn. Yeah, there was no chance in hell that we were ever going to block this turn. Okay, never mind. Yeah, 51. Damn. You must ask yourself, how do you do this without Wraith for it? Yeah. Oh, you get footworks or, or malazes. Those are your two other outs. No, I guess he wasn't weakened, right? Yeah, okay. He should always be weakened, so... Yeah, and also, I don't know if you know this, but if you Piercing Whale on the turn that the transform happens, the strength doesn't carry over. Oh, okay. Thanks. It's a neat little trick. I'm yeah. To to... So we could have bursted a Piercing Whale and had him back to zero strength for this part of the fight. This actually worked out relatively well. Yeah, that burst, the uh, burst flask was uh, helped out a lot. When did you start your stream? Had a long day, right? Uh, cool. Yeah, I don't know, like 9 a.m. or something, so yeah, it's 12 hours or so now. But I took uh, took about an hour break after ending my stream, so it's alright. Especially with, you know, this, the game is still relatively new to me, it's, and I, I love learning, so it's very, uh, it's very entertaining. So when I'm, uh, when I'm playing Hearthstone, I still enjoy it, but it's, it's different, you know. It's probably the same for you when you're playing, say, the Spire, or you're picking up a new game. Yeah. It's, just... it's really interesting to me to learn a game on stream.